Welcome to The Pulse, and it's time for sports. The man who loves sports joins me here, and I'm so excited about <laughs> the money Mayweather. He's coming to Ghana. That's big news. It's been the talk of town. Yeah, the whole definitely, of this definitely. Um, so he's coming, and uh, we're partnering uh, Upscale Entertainment to do this. Uh, it's a great you know, thing. Uh, Upscale Entertainment is bringing Floyd Mayweather to Ghana. So we are the... Uh, uh, official media mm. and uh, we're going to be doing a series of events look it's interesting i know the money bit is what you're interested in definitely so what else and <laughs> but, probably but you're together you're not now. supposed to be talking about money and stuff like that oh it's important <laughs> it's very important and i'll get to take a picture with him well we'll see about that and all know, of that how so, all yeah. right so mm. um nat take it away all right so uh we'll be building up to the uh floyd money mayweather visit and of course uh that will be on this platform as we've done uh, severally throughout the day. It's just one week to go and uh, we're ready to uh, host him here in Ghana. And it surely is going to be a very, very exciting time as uh, the whole world uh, gets to see him here in Ghana and the whole world's attention uh, comes here to Ghana. So uh, Floyd Mayweather Jr. is going to be in Ghana and uh, it's by the courtesy of Upscale Entertainment with uh, Multimedia as the official uh, media house. Uh, there's a big boxing night at the Bukum Boxing Arena on June 16 and before that will be uh, a motivational dinner where he will speak and inspire people on his life and how he's risen uh, through the ranks from nothing to significance and global significance for that matter. So there's going to be more on all of our platforms. So you have to be, uh, you know, uh, monitoring us very, very closely as we do this. All right. So um, this is going to be on uh, for a very long while between now and uh, next week by now. But let's now talk some women's football. Now, the Sanford Women's FA Cup is more attractive than, than the National League, the National Women's League. Now, this is according to uh, Linia Adi, who is uh, the chairperson for uh, the uh, National Women's uh, uh, League board. Now, um, the Sanford FA Cup has brought loads and loads of thrills um, over the period. And uh, as we go into yet another season, uh, we're looking forward to seeing who uh, will emerge winner. We know that uh, police ladies uh, emerged uh, winners of uh, the uh, maiden edition of the Sanford uh, uh, Women's FA Cup. But how is it going to go now? And uh, why, where is the competition coming from? What kind of competition are police ladies getting in the uh, Sanford Women's FA Cup? Now, on the phone with me is seasoned uh, sports writer, one of the very few uh, female sports journalists in this country who's uh, been very, very distinguished. Uh, she works with uh, the National Sports Newspaper, the Graphic Sports, and also is vice chairperson of the National Women's League Board. Rosalind Amo joins me on the phone line for this conversation. Uh, Rosalind, thank you very much for your time. Good afternoon and thanks for having me, Nat. Now, um, let's talk about this statement made by your chairperson about the level of competition being stiffer than that of the league itself, which is supposed to be a, a, of a bigger scale. Well, um, I guess that she's saying this in context of the patronage, the interest and the attraction or the attention the FA Cup is getting compared to the women's league. Um, you know that for five years we've been playing and we have not had the privilege of getting anybody to sponsor the league. But Sanford uh, came on board to take on the FA Cup. And even though we are just in season two, the competition is really catching up with many people. I mean, people are looking forward to it. And more so because it also involves some of the regional teams. You know, it starts from the region before they join in at the national level. So, and in that widespread and in that vein of contest, you can indeed say that Stanford has become, uh, Stanford FA Cup has become slightly more attractive than the national level. Um, you've been monitoring what's been going on for, for this season. Now, police ladies are at the center of all of the attraction. Tell me about um, those teams that threaten, or those clubs that threaten um, to take away that title. I mean, yesterday when we, we finished the draw, I was um, amused because you look at the draw and the top four teams in the National Women's League are playing among themselves. I'm talking of Sea Lions, Play Lady Strikers, 
And then immigration plays a mirror lady. Uh, police ladies will play solely royals. Another top team, um, newcomers, but they are quite tough. And it's easy. This is in, the league hasn't started too well for police. So in the southern zone, that is the competition they are likely to get. I mean, if they are able to survive holy royals next week, then it means that they will be coming up against any of the um, big four teams that I have talked about. If you go to the nothing zone, I mean, the, the challenge is even bigger. Of course, everybody thinks that Tim Dakwa is going to have it easy, but when it comes to the FA Cup, you know, it's always full of surprises and shocks. And they are playing Lepo ladies, even though they will be home to Lepo ladies. Lepo have some revenge um, agenda against Tim Dakwa because just last week they met and they were beating at the league level. So, um, Fabulous are already out. Tim Dakwa is out Fabulous. So, you cannot talk of bad loss coming in, but there is a certain action ladies, there is a certain prisons ladies, and even nothing ladies. So these are the kind of comp- I mean, competitors that uh, police ladies will be coming up against. But I think that the toughest will be when they play their quarterfinals and semifinal matches in the South East. Now, Rosalind, tell me something before we wrap up this conversation about, about the fans and what the kind of feedback they give uh, the, the National Women's League Board. Um, about what they see at these various league centers, especially with the Sanford Women's FA Cup. What is it that keeps driving them to go back and watch these games? Well, I can tell you that, for instance, if you went to Sekiman, where I'm from, that's what I play, they wholeheartedly support the team. So anytime I'm from, that's why I play, the whole town is in support. And they, they come there and their numbers to support them. Police ladies have also written on the back of their numbers. I mean, last year when they clashed with immigration at the Carrendo Park, I mean, it was quite a good attendance. And I think that it was because of that who wins factor. I mean, what is going to happen in the FA Cup? Usually in the league, because there is a second chance, people don't bother too much. But with the FA Cup, you know that you lose when you are out. There is no second chance. So I think those are the... The, the attractions and the fact that they may see a regional side that ordinarily they may not see in the National League. So the supporters of women's football come there in their numbers to see some of these challenges. And I guess it's also a good exercise for the coaches because already I'm informed that they started scouting for the various national teams. Also a scouting ground for the national team as well. All right. Rosalind, thank you very much for your time, and uh, we'll be looking forward to seeing uh, how all of that will go uh, in the um, Sanford Women's FA Cup. And of course, we look forward to seeing a lot more patronage of the games. Thank you very much. All right, so um, we heard Rosalind Amo, who is uh, a sports uh, writer with the uh, Graphic Sports Newspaper, and more importantly, the Vice Chairperson of the National Women's League Board, under whose uh, watch the uh, Sanford Women's FA Cup happens. There's going to be more in terms of following the games uh, across the country and bringing you all of the updates. So just before we wrap it up, uh, a very quick reminder that it's seven days more to go for uh, the undefeated tour of Ghana by Floyd Money Mayweather. It's put together by um, Upskill Entertainment and uh, uh, Multimedia is the official media. Of course, it's proudly sponsored by Glyco General, uh, Unibank, Golden Link uh, Savings and Loans and BabyJet Promotions. There's a lot to look forward to with this legend visiting Ghana, and I can't wait to see him as well. You keep it right here. There's more sports news later on, but you can follow us on Facebook, on Twitter, and, of course, on the sports page of myjoyonline.com. I'll be back uh, later this evening on the uh, Joy News uh, Prime uh, Sports Bulletin. Keep it here. My name is Nathaniel Atto, and I have love for sport.